I believe that God's called us to, to live a life of faith. And there's a something that's been going around and around in my mind, and that is that God wants us to be able to trust Him more. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. And you know, it's there's so many things happening and some disappointments perhaps. But I believe that God wants us to just trust Him. I'm going to be sharing a few things this morning. And John lived a life totally, 100% relying on the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of things we don't understand or perhaps we, we don't know the whole story. But John was a man before his time because the atmosphere, the church, where the, where the church was going, where it was heading, it was sort of heading in a wrong direction. But somehow or other, God spoke to this man who started to go out and do something that nobody else had ever done. He started baptizing. He started saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He started to do things and say things that, that for a lot of people they couldn't have worked out really what it was. A lot of the, the Jewish leaders and that came to him and they said, Are you Elijah? Are you, who, who are you? What are you? And, and he says, Well, I, I'm just a voice. I, I'm just one there. And he starts to share that, you know, how God spoke to him and, and told him that, that there's going to be one that was going to come. He wouldn't be even worthy to untie his sandals or even carry them or do anything. But this other one that was coming after him would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. But all this he had to do sort of totally trusting the Spirit of God that was leading him. And I believe that God is looking for a bunch of people that somehow or other will abandon themselves to their own thinking, their own logic, and hear what the Spirit of God is saying in our hour, and begin to rise up and to begin to declare what God wants us to declare. And he went out and he started to, to speak about water baptism and things like that and, and just different things. But John lived a life totally relying on the Holy Spirit. In John 1.26, John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there's one among you whom you do not know. It is he who is coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandal straps I'm not worthy to loosen. The next day, the next day, and somehow or other, John didn't really know Jesus either. There's a whole generation of people that didn't know this Christ. But John didn't know him either. John had to rely on faith because God says, God said to him, He said, The one that you see the Spirit descending upon, this is Him. He's the one. And so John is going about his business doing what John did. And I believe that as he looked up, the Spirit of God spoke to his heart. I, I believe, friends, like never before, we're living in a generation where God wants to lead us by His Spirit. And it's going to take, it's going to take something to be able to say what God wants you to say and do what God wants you to do, not really understanding or not really knowing, but just knowing on the inside. And when God starts to speak to us, all of our logic and all of our natural thinking will try to war against what the Spirit of God is saying. And as he's baptizing, this Jesus walks down and John looks up and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That was a prophetic statement. It was a prophetic word that somehow or other, most probably, only John and Jesus really knew what was going on. And sometimes it's going to be like that. Other people around about you might, might not understand what's going on. 
but we do. In verse 31, he said, I did not know him. I didn't know him. But God said, the one that you see the Spirit descending upon, he's the one. Of course, we know that he, John, uh, Jesus came to John and said, John, will you baptize me? And because of this revelation that, that John had, he said, oh, no, Lord. He said, you, you baptize me. He said, no, 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 no. No, you've got to do this so as that the word will be fulfilled, so everything will be done according to God's word. And so John baptized him. And as Jesus came out of the water, what God had spoken to him about, he saw it and it happened. Jesus, John didn't know who Jesus was. John had to totally rely on the Holy Spirit to reveal the Christ. I don't think it's too hard for us when God asks us to live by faith. He expects us to, to follow Him. He expects us to be obedient. We are, I, I honestly believe we're living in a time when, when God is wanting to, to draw His people to Himself. He's wanting to do something greater than perhaps has ever been seen before in His church. He wants to pour His Spirit out in a fresh way, in a fresh, fresh way. But you see, Jesus lived on this planet totally dependent too on the Holy Spirit to raise Him from the dead. You've got to think about things a little bit. When Jesus walked on earth, He had choices. Just like you and I have got choices. We all have choices. He had to make decisions contrary to how he felt. I think we've got to learn to do that too. I want you to have a quick look in the book of Luke with me. Luke chapter 4. This is not long after Jesus is baptized. And it says there that Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being tempted for 40 days by the devil. In those days he ate nothing and afterwards when it had ended he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Jesus up until now, I just lived a, a normal life, I believe. Forty days of harassment he went through. You've got to remember that Jesus spent 30 years doing life. This didn't happen when he came out of the mother's womb that he's speaking in tongues and casting out devils and healing the sick. It didn't happen until he was 30 years of age. When John says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He goes into the Jordan and gets baptized. The Spirit of God came upon him. How important is it today for you and I to be filled with the Holy Spirit? If ever there's a day we need a fresh revelation of what God did to us when He filled us with the Holy Ghost. It is not just a, 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 a thing It is more than that. Being harassed. Jesus spent 30 years doing life. He's working as a carpenter. I would imagine that there would have been some people that would have ripped him off. I would have been, if you, you know, Dave, has anybody ever ripped you off as a carpenter? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's life. You do a job and somebody doesn't like it. I don't want to pay, whatever it might be. He would, have, he would have had friends. He was doing, just doing what Jews did. He might, might have even liked to go fishing. I know he liked to eat them. Might have even enjoyed a roast lamb dinner. But he was doing 
normal things up until he was 30, just living life. But something happened to him. We sing a song, something happened, and now I know who touched me. And I think, again, we need a fresh revelation on that. Who really touched me? Who really got involved with my life? Now, here he is. He's just gone through the waters of baptism. The Spirit of God comes upon him. He's taken in by the Spirit into a wilderness. He's tempted, he's harassed, he's buffeted, he's challenged in every way man could ever be challenged. The enemy comes up to him and says, if you really are the Son of God then, make these stones become bread. Can I say this to you? That would have been so, so simple for Jesus to do. That would have been so simple. You know, he, 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 could, have, he could have, you know, said... You know, I'll show you. <laughs> Is that a little bit of flesh in there? I'll show you. He'd been fasting for 40 days. He was hungry. He was very, very hungry. Constant bombardment. Finally, he comes in and he challenges him. Well, if you really are, prove it to me. Natural man always wants to prove himself. You don't have to be around people too long before they want to tell you what they've done and what they haven't done. How good they are and how big they are, whatever else. You caught a fish that big? I caught one bigger. Jesus could have said, I'll show you. I'll show you then. No, his decision. See, Jesus had to make decisions the same as you have to make decisions. And the decisions that you and I have to make is, are we really, really, really going to trust Jesus? Or are we going to lean to our own understanding? Are we really, really, really going to put our trust in Jesus? His decision was, I don't have to prove anything to you. Friend, this morning, I don't have to prove anything to you. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I must know who I am. And Jesus said, I don't have to prove anything to you because I know who I am. I'm a child of God. You need to say that to yourself this morning. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to any enemy. I know who I am, and what's more, I know who you are. I know who you are. But I would imagine, <laughs> because you see, he was every bit a man and every bit God. And the man bit in him would have said, but I want to, I want, I'm not going to say anything, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn water into wine. <laughs> and not just a little bit. Gallons of the stuff. I will feed 5,000 people with a couple of little fish and a few small loaves. I will raise the dead and I will build my church that your gates will not prevail against it. And I'm going to give my church authority over you. And they're going to crush your head. He must have been thinking, and I and the church will be your worst nightmare. You see, friend, for that to happen, something's got to change. Because that's what God thinks. The Bible says that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Jesus came back to the synagogue and He declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. I want to tell you, every devil in hell would have been trembling because they knew that He had overcome and triumphed over the, the temptation of the enemy. And He said, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. I've come to set at liberty those that have been bruised and bound and afflicted. I've come to heal. 
verse 32, it talks about uh, how it is in the synagogue and there was a man with an unclean spirit. And this unclean spirit came up to him and said, I know who you are. And Jesus just spoke to that unclean thing and told him to come out, and he did. Jesus, the man in the garden, he could have said no, but he said some things there that I believe the church has got to pick up on. Not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but thine be done. Have thine own way, Lord. You are the potter. I am the clay. Amen. Make me and mold me. Shape me into whatever you want to shape me into. Have your way. We all have a natural man and a spirit man. Usually they oppose each other. Totally oppose each other. We need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the hour that we're living in. Many today are claiming that the Spirit told them such and such, told them to do this, told them to do that, go here, go there. One man came to his pastor and said, God spoke to me and told me to go to Brazil. He said, he did? He said, yes. He said, I was eating a Brazil bar at the time. And I looked down and it was there. And the pastor said, well, lucky you weren't eating a Mars bar. There are a lot of people, there's a lot of false prophets, there's a lot of things going on. We need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. We need sound doctrine. We need discernment. We need wisdom. The Bible tells me that if I want discernment, if I want wisdom, I ask Him for it. And He will give it to me. Like never before, we need to be truly led and totally led by the Holy Spirit. To do that, to do that, you must spend time with Him. Spend a little time with Him. That's what tonight's all about. That's what Monday night's all about. Spending a little time, spending a little time with Him. Tuesday night's the hour of power. I want to spend a little time with Him. Jesus on the cross. I, I thank God that we don't have to go all that way. But the decisions that we might have to make is, will I go next Sunday? Will it be uncomfortable? I want to tell you, friends, it's going to be beautiful. Air conditioning. I've been there this morning to check the parking. There's heaps of parking. It's just going to be so wonderful. We're going to have... Cappuccino coffee on sale. It's just going to be amazing. What an amazing place it's going to be. Don't say in your mind, well, I won't go next week. Come along. Slap the devil up the side of the head and be there or be square. <laughs> Jesus on the cross, he was so alone. He had to just rely on, 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 on the Holy Spirit. He died a lonely, horrid death. You can't imagine it. He even cried out in the midst of it, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken, another word, is abandoned. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, it's, it's so much... We know that the Word of God tells us that He could have called on 12 legions of angels that would have taken Him immediately. The suffering would have stopped. Everything would have stopped. But the Bible says, for the joy 
How many people are glad about that? The joy of seeing a bunch of people worshiping God. A bunch of people saying, I want more of you. I want, I want, to, I want to linger in your presence. I, I, want, I want to draw near to you so you can draw near to me. I, I want to come. I want to come. I want to come. I'm very, very, to this morning, I am word for word because I want us to hear what I believe God is speaking to me about in this hour. Just don't want to go off in my mind to preach. I, I want to stick to these notes. He could have called 12 legions of angels, but he, Jesus, believed the Holy Spirit would raise him up. And I don't know about you, but I have confidence in Romans 8.11 that says, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, He will quicken, make alive your mortal body. Friend, I want to be made alive. I don't care how old I am. I don't care, age is nothing. God is going to do something. Somebody sent me a text, I can't remember what it was, but something about age. The same Spirit that raised Christ and the dead dwells in you. Give me a wave if the Spirit dwells in you. He will quicken, make alive your mortal body. Today as we enter into seeking God's presence, let the Holy Spirit reveal the Christ of the Bible, the church that God wants to build, the church that God wants to reveal, the church that God wants to release on this planet, the people of God. The world doesn't need another denomination. It just needs a revelation of the Christ. We, the church, need to draw near to our Lord, spend time with Him, so He can lead us and guide us. Romans 8.14, it says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. So we all have a choice. Either go after God, or we just play church. I'm calling this church to be God chasers, to go after God. Because if we don't go after God, and if we don't repent, we don't let God deal with us, friend, I want to tell you, I don't know what's going to happen with this world. I don't know what's going to happen with Australia. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Chronicles 2, uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name, that's the church, the church, if the church will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Friends, our nation needs healing. Our nation needs something. And I believe that it's the Holy Spirit's guidance. It's more of God. It's if God can lead us, if He can empower us, if He can fill us afresh with His anointing. If we, people, as the people of God, say, God, I just don't want to be like church. I want to be the church. I, I just don't want to be knocked around I want to be like that woman. I want to be like that woman that, that stood up and made a declaration. And I want to tell you what, it didn't frighten hell out of the devil, but it frightened him into hell. Could have, would have, should have, but it didn't. And she began to cry out, I'm sick. And you know, sometimes if you might say, I'm sick of this, and people say, oh, don't say that, you will get sick. No. Get it in its context. I'm sick of you stealing my joy. And that's changed too. My joy doesn't come from my friends, my job, or even my husband. My joy is found in Jesus. And just in case you, you've forgotten, devil, just in case you've forgotten, I am a child of God. Hallelujah. And greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. 
friend, I want to tell you, get, rise up, stir something inside of you today. Draw near to God. Do something. Yes, it will cost you something. Yes, it will. Yes, it will take an effort. Yes, it will take a little bit more. And yes, it will. Yes, it may cost you something to break that stronghold. It may mean that you're going to have to give an offering to break poverty off your life. It may mean you're going to have to rise up and do something to make that arm that's never worked for years work. It may mean that you've got to do something different. It may mean something. But in the meantime, I want to encourage you to draw near to God. Hallelujah. Stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Stir yourself. We make opportunity, friend. Come up to the tonight at seven o'clock, at six o'clock for an hour. Oh, but my favorite program's on. Oh, training. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Millie. You don't want to shrink anymore. No. <laughs> I can say that she's my cousin. I'm not being rude. A little bit, perhaps. <laughs> yes, it'll cost. But it cost Jesus a lot, too. It would have cost John a lot. I've been thinking of John a lot lately. How did God tell him to do that? Nobody else was doing that. Show me a sign. <laughs> Brazil bar. No, just go with your heart. Do you really, sincerely want to see a move of God? Well, it's no good just saying God do it. God, you do. No, you do it. John was there. I wonder what he was doing when God said to him, John, yes, Lord, I want you to go out baptizing people in water, telling them to repent. <laughs> telling them there's one coming after you that's mightier than you. And he's going to baptize them in the Holy Ghost and fire. That was all strange language. They wouldn't have had a clue what he was talking about. You reckon some of the rabbis and some of the religious leaders and some of the people would have come up and said, look, John, I think you've been, you might have had a bad pizza the other night. That really wasn't a dream from God. That really is not God. <laughs> look, I tell you what, I've got so many things going through this house of mine. <laughs> so many thoughts, so many plans, so many things I want to do. I'll have to live to be 150 to 180 to do half of them. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get <laughs> She said, you better get a move on. <laughs> But there's so many things I want to do. I want to see people totally restored. I want to see people, I want to see blind eyes opened. Amen. I, I want to see cripples running. I want to see people that are lost saved. I want to see marriages that have been destroyed. I want to see them strong and healthy for Jesus. I want to see a Rashakabundi. I'm not even going to tell you, I'd frighten you if I told you half the things that I would love to do. With God's help, we will do them. Amen? But friend, something's got to happen inside of every one of us for it to happen. Amen? Spend time with God. Spend time with God. Spend time.